Hi, it's Morgan and welcome to The Dove's Nest. In today's video, I'm going to be doing some school at home lesson planning. Okay, so the first week or two that we were doing school at home, I was just keeping our lesson plans in Evernote and just like a really sloppy outline. And then I got into Google Sheets and I created a full lesson plan for the week. Um, it's very reminiscent of something that you would find in a homeschool planner. It's got the check boxes that I really enjoy ticking off. And so I'm going to leave a link to where you can access a blank version of this document in Google Sheets below. But really quick, I'm going to show you the very basic layout. Okay, so this is the basic layout of my lesson plans. You can see it covers the whole week, Monday through Sunday. I left our subjects in so you could see how it lays out, but these are fully customizable. So just go through and add the subjects that you're studying in your homeschool. There's a place at the bottom for where you can keep your teacher's notes as well as a to-do list. Now the reason there are two columns with the subjects is because when you print it, it's actually going to print on two pages so it will open up like a book. And that way you will have subjects on both the left side and the right side of your book and I'll show you just a quick little snippet of what that looks like. So when you print, this is what the layout will look like. So you'll have your full eight and a half by 11 sheet of lesson plans. You do need to print it with a 0.25 inch or a quarter inch margin. So you will have to change the margins so that it will print properly and get everything included in those two pages. The other thing you will want to do is change the date. So you'll come right over here to cell C2 and you will change the date to whatever week you are starting on, and then you'll see it automatically updates all of the dates in your planner. I'm actually going to go back. I have a template created. It's very similar to this. It's just not blank, but it already has the subjects that we do every single week. So rather than me having to retype them every week, I just use this template that's got everything in it for me. So this is sort of the template that I am used to working with every week. So the very first thing I want to do is change my dates. Now you can type out the date or you can do it by numbers. However is easy for you, it will update automatically. As I said, Everything in this calendar already is the stuff that we do every single week. And so rather than me having to go through and fill it out every week when I do my lesson planning, I just leave it. I do want to make a note under our morning subject. That's the enrichment subject that I just added in our homeschool updates videos. I will be sure to include a link to that video up here if you haven't seen it yet. But I don't even update these subjects because Squilt has a monthly calendar. So in order to find out what we're doing that day, I just look at that calendar. As for poetry and fable, I just open up the books that we're reading. We pick any story or any poem page that we want and we read it. It doesn't need to be that planned out. So let's move on to our devotional. The first thing I do is I grab the weekly kit that we are using from the Redheaded Hostess. And I will also grab our New Testament stories since we are studying from the New Testament and I will go ahead and open up our Living Scriptures subscription page. The next thing I'm going to do is I am just going to take this this piece of the kit. It's where the creator has just added what the week study is. And so this week that I'm planning for, we're going to be studying Matthew 3, Mark 1, and Luke 3. And she has just included a little overview of all of the subjects in the packet. And I'm specifically looking for these ones marked with a yellow dot and that means young children so those are the activities that we want to do now because this is the first week we are reading in the book of mark she has a little poster activity called who was mark and so what i like to do on that day is we just introduce the apostle and we read these little fun facts and then that's it for the day so i think i'm going to start monday with who was mark and the way i put it in my lesson plan is i will just write And then because both my son and my daughter do devotional with us, I just take a hot pink asterisk and I mark the subject. And that's how I know that my daughter's going to be doing that with us. So moving on to Tuesday, we're going to start talking this week about John the Baptist. 
And so she has another little activity here, and it's sort of a John the Baptist dress-up doll. And so I'm going to put that as our lesson. Again, I'm going to annotate that my daughter will be doing this lesson with us. And once we talk about it, sometimes I like to go see if there is a living scripture video about the subject. So I'm going to do that right now. And I can see here that there is a John the Baptist video. So I'm going to add that for our activity that day. We're just going to watch the living scriptures video. And sometimes I will even include a link to the video. On Wednesday, I think we're going to talk about the baptism of Jesus because that's kind of a big part of what we're covering in this book. So I'm going to go ahead and notate that in here as well as add my asterisk because my daughter's going to be doing it with us. And I think in our New Testament scripture stories, this is how we're going to learn about the baptism. So I'm just going to scroll over here to the index. And I am going to find Jesus is baptized page 26. And these scripture stories are awesome because it's just a quick little, they're illustrated and it's like a comic book kind of, and they're just quick little stories. So it's what, three pages, four pages, done. So I'm gonna enter that here. And I'm even going to put what page it's on to help future Morgan. <laughs> okay, next I'm going to jump over to Thursday. And I noticed in this packet that she has included a Baptism of Jesus interactive timeline. So I don't even look at what these activities are. I just notice that there's the yellow spot. It means young children. And so I'm going to include it. So again, we are going to do... The baptism of Jesus with our pink asterisk and we are going to do baptism of Jesus interactive timeline lastly on Friday there is one final activity in this packet and it talks about the Godhead and it's a matching activity so you have God Jesus Holy Ghost and then a bunch of little cards and you match them. So I think we're gonna do that. So let's type our lesson, notate that my daughter will be doing it with us, and the Godhead Pocket activity. The other thing I need to do, which I forgot, and I usually put it on the very top row of that devotional, is I need to include our hymn. Now this week we are singing a song called Baptism. It's about Jesus getting baptized. So I'm going to come over here. I've already pulled up the sheet music. So I'm just going to grab this link. I'm gonna head back over to our lesson plans and I'm going to enter it here. And then I'm gonna copy and paste it every day for the rest of the week. And that's it, my devotions for the week are done. So I can put this stuff back in our drawer and then I go ahead and I usually just keep two weekly devotional packets in our drawer at a time, the one we're working on and then the one for the following week in case there's anything that I need to prepare. For example, I think I'm going to laminate my John the Baptist poster and then I need to cut these out and I will most likely laminate them as well. And then also this Godhead packet, it says it's a pocket activity. So I imagine I'm going to need to put some kind of pockets or Ziploc bags somewhere on here and that will need to get prepped. Um, and so I just keep that in our devotional drawer as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put these back in here. Next we're moving on to our language art. I mentioned recently that we started the Level K Language Arts course book, and the thing I love about this is it's broken up to do one lesson every day, which makes planning so, so simple. We start every day by singing the ABC song with its sounds. So I have this alphabet chart, we look at it, we um, sing the ABCs once through, and then we sing the same song, but we say the letter sounds instead of the letters, 
And then we also use this paper to sing the Good and the Beautiful's vowel song. And I've made the vowels red, so we can easily just look, see what vowels. We might talk quickly about vowels and consonants and the difference. We'll talk about how the consonants are blue, vowels are red, and we move on. So that covers our singing. You can see I leave it on my template because we do it every single day. As I mentioned in the language arts level K, you do one lesson a day. So I'm just gonna look back at this previous week and I'm gonna find out where we left off. And we left off on lesson five. So I'm just gonna go through and we're gonna do one lesson every day. And to make things easier for me, I copy it <laughs> and I paste it and then I literally just go through and I change the lesson number every day. The other thing I will do is if there's anything I want my daughter to be doing, um, I will put that sort of at the very bottom and again, I put it in pink. So I'm gonna change my font color and we are actually starting her with the Good and the Beautiful pre-K. We're gonna do one lesson a week and then we're gonna fill in with some activities from Confessions of a Homeschooler, as well as Leapfrog Letter Factory and Numbers Ahoy videos because those ones are awesome. So I'm gonna enter that now. Two, four, five, six. Um, and I'm actually Moving on to handwriting, we are still getting lessons from my son's TK teacher as far as handwriting goes. And so she hasn't posted them yet, but I'm fairly certain we're gonna be doing letters O and P. And so I'm just gonna sort of keep with the same format with what we've been doing using our handwriting without tears. So on Mondays, we are gonna take the first letter that we are learning that week and we're gonna practice it on our chalkboard. So we are learning the uppercase O and then we are probably going to be doing the uppercase O handwriting without tears worksheet. Now with our handwriting without tears worksheets, I usually just copy them out of the book and I make two copies and my daughter will do it with us. I don't put an asterisk here because it's not necessary that she do it with us, but it's an option. For Tuesday, we're gonna do the lowercase O. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays is when we do our Kids Art Hub and we draw something that starts with that letter. Usually I will find a Kids Art Hub that starts with that letter and I will link the video in my lesson plan, but I'm not sure what she wants us to draw yet, so I'm just gonna leave it blank for now. Next on Wednesdays, we do the same thing as Monday, but with our second letter of the week. So we're going to do the chalkboard for an uppercase P and the handwriting without tears, letter P worksheet. And then again, Thursday is the same as Tuesday, but with the lowercase letter and a kid's art hub. On Fridays, she usually sends us a number of the week, and I assume this week we're going to be on number nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that into our lesson plans. Hmm. Can you give me two minutes, please? The other thing she usually sends home on Fridays is to rainbow write all of the numbers they've learned up to that point. And that just means they take a crayon, they write the numbers one through nine in this case, and then they take another color and they write over it and they do it with three to five color crayons to make the numbers look like rainbows and look pretty. Next, we're gonna move on to reading. Now again, this is where I have things 
in our weekly schedule that we do every single week. So for example, every Monday at noon, my son has a Zoom call with his class. They have lunch and they do a show and tell and they just talk with each other. On Friday, they have a 10.30 a.m. call where they do a snack and chat. Um, and it's just sort of a free for all. They don't really have anything that they have to discuss that week. The other things I have in reading that don't seem to change every week is that my son spends 15 minutes on the Lexia Core app, and this is assigned by his teacher. So he has to do that every day for 15 minutes. And then I also just have a note of our read aloud, and currently we're reading the BFG. Um, and we might do that in the morning during breakfast. We might do it in the afternoon when we're kind of bored and need something to do after swimming. We might do it just before nap time or we might do it just before bedtime. But it's on here just so we remember to do our read aloud. But I also like to include a book every day for my son to read. And because we just got the Abeka K4, K5 Animal Friends readers, we're going to be doing one of those every day this week. Okay, so the first one we are reading is a Becca tip. And again, I'm gonna copy this and just put it in every cell and then just change the specific book. Gus. Tess and Bess. Matt the Rat. And and Pet Pete. And those are the readers we're gonna be doing this week. Our next subject is math. Now we start every math lesson by counting to 100. So I'm just gonna write count to 100 and I'm going to copy and paste it in every single day of the week. Once that's done, I'm gonna move on to our lessons. Now because we are using the Good and the Beautiful Math Level K, we just do one lesson every day. And so how I plan is I'm going to go back to the prior week and I'm going to look at math and I see that we ended on lesson number five. And so I'm just going to start with lesson six and do one lesson a day for the rest of the week. Again, I'm just copying and pasting and then I'm going to change the lesson numbers. And math for my son is done. Now again, I like to include little activities here for my daughter. I also like to leave room in math because again, my son's teacher will send home some activities. She usually doesn't post them until the Sunday before the week starts, but usually there's like some number worksheets or counting worksheets or 3D shapes is something they're working on right now. And so I like to leave space to type those things in as well. And now we're moving on to music. Now usually for music on Mondays, my daughter's teacher sends home a YouTube video lesson. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in pink first. And then we just finished lesson 12 for my son last week. So I'm going to take out his book and I'm gonna see what he has to do for lesson 13. Usually in my son's music class, he has some songs that he needs to listen to and things to think about. He usually has a couple of songs to practice playing on his bells. And then every Friday, we will do his actual music theory assignment. But I try to break up these activities throughout the week. So I think for Monday, he's going to do Oops, this is lesson 13. CD activity, this is 20. Okay. Tuesdays are the days that my son gets his YouTube video lesson, so I'm gonna type that first.
And then I'll go through my daughter's book and I'll select some songs and activities for her to do on the day she's not doing her lesson. Wednesday I'm going to add some more assignments for my son and again just some more songs and activities for my daughter. And I'm going to do the same thing for Thursday and Friday. And that's it for our music. <laughs> Lastly, we have our nature study. And I have noticed that because it's sort of the end of the school year or getting into summertime where it's really hot to be out in nature, the lessons in our Exploring Nature with Children book are kind of, hmm. <laughs> and so, we are actually combining some so that we can move on ahead and start doing other things. But this week for nature, I think we are going to do a bee and ant study. And so again, I'm typing it in my lesson plans and I'm going to put that pink asterisk because my daughter does everything right along with us. And then again, I'm going to copy and paste it for the entire week. Now for our nature study, we keep it pretty simple. We might read some books about the subject. We will look at a piece of artwork. We will um, sing a song, but we don't really get too heavy into it. <laughs> um, it's a very easy nature study. And so the first thing I like to do is I like to, let's see, we have ants here. As I said, I'm combining a couple. So I'm gonna start, we're gonna start with black ants first. So the first thing I do is I just sort of look through the curriculum and I see if there's any sort of lesson that I can read to my kids. And there is. So we are going to do the ants lesson on page 157 of this book. And then I also just check in here for any activities or suggested read alouds. That would be fun. Okay. So here's what I think we're gonna do. I think we're gonna do the lesson in the book and then we are going to read from our illustrated stories from Aesop, The Ant and the Grasshopper. So I think we'll do that on Monday. On Tuesday, I have a book. It's a Let's Read and Find Out science book and it's called Ant Cities. So I think we're just gonna read that. There is a suggested piece of art to enjoy, so I'm gonna go ahead and type that in and see if it's something that we would be interested in looking at while we listen to a classical piece of music. And that is called Ant Hill by Alvin Shishkin. 
And usually I just pull up the wiki art page and see what I can see. <laughs> I'm not terribly impressed with this particular piece of art. So that's okay. <laughs> we are going to go ahead and we are going to look at this piece of art. I'm going to add it to our lesson plans. Next, I'm going to add our musical piece for the week. And I just like to go through our Let's Play Music library in my iTunes and see if I can't find a song that would work for us. And I think I found one. Because we are doing ants and bees this week, I think we're just going to do Flight of the Bumblebee. That's easy enough. <laughs> Now, because I like to have sort of a hands-on nature study activity, I think maybe on Wednesday we'll just make some ants out of Play-Doh. And that will be it for that nature study on ants. On Thursday and Friday, I'm going to come over here and we are going to start talking about bees. So I'm going to turn in here and June week two is honeybees. Now the reason I'm okay with only spending two days on bees instead of a full week is mostly because I don't have any books about bees and I don't have access to a library to read books about bees. So we are limited to what's in here and what I can craft at home. Okay, so there's a pretty good lesson in here about honeybees. And the reason I decided to combine ants and bees is because their life cycle is fairly similar, as well as their societal structure is very similar. They both work as a team society instead of individual animals. So I am going to just have our lesson And that starts on page 173. Now these lessons can go very detailed, talking about the taxonomy of each animal. I mean, they teach these kids like kingdom phylum, class order, family, genus, species, all of that. They teach the body parts. They get pretty in depth. As I said, because we're so young, we just do a very easy gloss over of our nature study. One of the other things this study includes every week is a nature walk and things to find or collect on the nature walk. And just because we have to stay at home, we're not really going out to places where we would be able to do a nature walk. So sometimes I throw it in, most of the time I don't, we just go in the backyard. Okay, so on Monday, I think we're just going to do our lesson. I may try to find some read alouds on YouTube to read. Um, and then we will probably sing a song from our Let's Play Music. Oh, hi, it's future Morgan here. I completely forgot about a few things. And so I wanted to jump back in and show you the updates I made to our nature study for Thursday and Friday for the lessons on bees. So the first thing we're gonna do on Thursday, we're still gonna have our bee lesson from the Exploring Nature with Children curriculum. But in that curriculum is a bee poem, How Doth the Little Busy Bee. And you might remember this poem from Alice in Wonderland. So we're just gonna kind of go over it and talk about it. We're going to then sing our songs. Um, I'm bringing home a baby bumblebee and then we have a fun little finger play, where is the beehive? And it sort of includes counting. So that will be really fun for my daughter. And then lastly, we're gonna get on YouTube and look up some read aloud books about bees. Then on Friday, Usually on Friday is when we do our big art piece. I don't know why I didn't think of this, but on Friday, we're going to listen to Flight of the Bumblebee again. There's a suggested art piece in the curriculum and it's called Wisteria and Bee. And so this is it. And we're just going to look at it and talk about it really quickly. 
We're then going to watercolor a beehive scene. My kids are obsessed with watercolors lately, so maybe we'll try to make some fun um, shapes with pattern blocks and get some honeycomb in there and then just have fun watercoloring the bees. And then lastly, you guys, one of my husband's best friends uh, owns a company called San Diego Bee Rescue. And he and his wife just got married last summer, so she's the newbie, and they go rescue bees. So if anybody has hives in their yard or a bee problem, Jeff and Julie go out, and he's crazy. Most of the time, he doesn't even wear protective gear, um, but they will go out and they will rescue the bees and clean up your hive, and they post Instagram videos and stories all the time. They talk about waggle dances like in, on their Instagram feed. They always have videos where they encourage you to find the queen bee. And so my kids actually like to look through the videos and then see if they can find the queen. But you can see Jeff right here. He's not even wearing protective clothing. Um, but they're just super fun. And so I think we're either going to watch a video or we might call Jeff and have him come over and teach us something. So that was the final change that we made for our nature study. That's gonna wrap it up for our week of lesson plans. That's what I do if I'm not trying to film and talk to a camera. This usually takes me maybe a half hour to get the whole thing done. Usually the nature, the Exploring Nature with Children's book is a little bit more in depth and gives some more ideas of things to do. Usually we have access to our library and so it's easy to go and find a ton of books to read. Um, Maybe we'll end up watching B-Movie, <laughs> the B-Movie on Friday night. That could be fun. Um, but you can see that I really try to keep things simple. So even though we're covering a lot, each subject only takes us about 10 or 15 minutes to do. We don't spend more than an hour and a half or two hours every day doing school. I usually do school between breakfast and lunch, and this is what we do in a given week. If we don't get to something, it's fine, we move on. Sometimes, now that it's warm, my kids just wanna go outside and swim, and that's fine, so that's what we'll do. Anyway, thank you so much for being here and watching my video today and helping me get through my lesson plan. As always, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you in my next video.